So you're envisioning a cocktail area with a cool bar and maybe a champagne gin or shot wall at one end, maybe some high bar tables and stools in the middle, and a few strategically placed couches, sofas and ottomans for people to sit, gather around and chat in. You might want those fancy coupe champagne glasses, you know, the champagne saucers. Maybe you want a champagne tower. Maybe for your reception, you want it all beautiful linens, maybe with a pop of some colours, some sage green. That's huge at the moment. Some terracotta orange, some cornflower blue. Or maybe you want to keep it classic, just ivory. Tablecloths napkins, glassware, plates, candles, flower stands, signage, those little boxes, you know, that you put your wedding cards in that have the money, almost all of these trending, beautiful, aesthetically pleasing and purpose built wedding decor items and functional items like the things you're actually eating off can be hired from all sorts of little hire companies to really big groups all around the world. Here in Australia, we have certain groups that in the wedding industry, we know that we can trust. Those that have quality items, things that aren't shipped, things that aren't broken, dirty, things like that. Because I imagine that if you're going to this much effort to plan your wedding, you want it to look good. You don't want chairs with legs that are slightly broken. You don't want dirty equipment or chipped plinths. But as easy as it sounds to hire these items, rent them, bring them in for your wedding, it's likely that you've never brought in items for an event in the past and you may never again. And it's quite a specific process with these companies, which can sometimes be hard to understand as a customer, as the engaged couple who's hiring these items. Why do they have certain time windows where you can pick up your items? Why don't some places deliver? Why does it cost more to transport certain types of items? You know, these are all questions that might come up. And so what I'd love to share with you today is some stellar advice from the team at Honoured Hire, which is based here in Adelaide, South Australia, about how to get the best out of your hire and rental items how to make sure that the things that you've booked and paid for rock up and that they're fit for purpose, that they're what you actually want and need, and also how to get them back to the place, whether you're dropping them off yourself, whether you're arranging for someone to help you pack everything down and then get it back, and super important, not lose your security deposit, which can be a massive bummer after your wedding day. So today I'm going to run through six key wedding hire tips that's going to save you time and money and angst. It's going to save you from stress in the lead up to your wedding and certainly afterwards because you want that security deposit back. Let's get stuck into it. Unbridely is a community of pro wedding vendors who believe in freedom and integrity in weddings, giving you options, solutions, tips and tricks to create the experience and memories that you and your fiancé really want and deserve. Because we believe that weddings are a team sport. With how-tos, stories and interviews with recently married couples, we find out what went right and what they'd change if they could go back and do it all over again. I'm Camille and welcome to the Unbridly podcast. In the event and wedding hire and rental space, it can truly be said that you get what you pay for. And increased costs in items that you might hire, chairs for around the table. What you're actually doing there is you're choosing to have a certain style delivered in a certain way, or you going to pick them up, maintained to a certain standard, and with the assurance that that company has your back. If they deliver one or two short, that they're going to come to the party, that they're going to work out a way to make sure you get what you want and need. My little caveat for hire and rental is perhaps more than in any other part of your wedding planning, you truly get what you pay for. Premium wedding hire supply places. They have the latest designs. They have certain things that are trending and sometimes they also 
instigate trends themselves. You know, they bring things in from overseas, they source things, they're looking for inspiration before you've even started to think about what style of candle holder might, you might like on your reception table. And so they're constantly evolving and making these shifts and changes in what they offer. And they also take care of their products. And that takes space. It takes warehouses full of plates, cutlery, napkins, uh, all of the things that you can possibly imagine that decorate a wedding. There are warehouses full of this stuff, but they have to be kept in a reasonably well-controlled environment. So you can't let dust get into these things. You've got to keep them fairly organized. You can't have them jammed in too close. It'll cause damages, right? You've got to keep them in a temperature controlled environment as well. If it gets too hot, a lot of these things can warp, break. You have to keep moisture away from them. That could cause mold. You've got to use a reputable dry cleaner for all the linens. There are so many little parts of hiring and rental that, fair enough, you're not even thinking about and you shouldn't need to because a reputable rental or hire place, like generally in the States, I understand you use the term rentals. Here in Australia, we use hire, but the process is the same. The idea is someone has stock of something that you want for your wedding and you pay them a little bit to borrow it and return it in the same state that you got it in. Okay, so the first tip is for those who are picking up their hire items. So sometimes you can hire or rent smaller things, small items, items that can fit in your car that you drive around every day. Sometimes the things that you're hiring are big, big furniture things, and they need to be moved and removed and transported by professionals who are lifting with their legs, quite frankly, who are insured for this sort of stuff, who can fit it into their trucks and vans without damaging anything. So this tip is for those who are picking up their hire items. It sounds so simple, but I can assure you this happens most Wednesdays, Thursdays. You know, this is when couples are going to hire places to pick up their stuff ready for their weekend weddings. And that is to ensure that your vehicle, your car, your truck, your van, whatever you're taking to this rental hire place is the right size for the things that you've got on your order. And if you're unsure, please ask them because they will be able to let you know really quickly, really easily. And for most really good hire and rental places, the big things, the signage frames, the plinths, furniture, most of their large items will have their measurements online because, of course, you should have sussed that out when you hired them to make sure they fit into the space that you've got there, your reception venue or your ceremony venue or your dance floor, whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah, hopefully you had a look at the measurements, how big these things are. And so you'll need to calculate that. But also keep in mind that your breakables, your glasses, vases, plates, etc., they're packed in boxes. They're in tubs, they're in crates, and they take up a lot of room to transport. So a pretty standard wine glass crate of, say, 15 red wine glasses. It's about the length of the box is 50 centimetres, the width about 35, the height about 27. You can only fit 15 red wine glasses in there. So if you're mixing up your red and white wine glasses if you're having champagne glasses as well, if you're also having tumblers for water and soft drinks and, you know, other non-alcoholic drinks or, you know, mixers, um, highballs, you know, whiskey glasses, things like that, even if you've only got 50 guests, you're going to want at least one glass for each guest. And the number of these boxes, these crates, is going to very easily fit up, you know, a family-sized sedan, like, like super quick. So make sure you know what you're picking up, how many there are, the sizes of them, and work out what the capacity of your vehicle is. You might need a couple of friends to come over as well to help you, or you might need to hire a small van. Tip number two is to make sure you notify your venue of your hire and rental plans, including the date and time of your arrival or what's known in the industry as a bump in. 
So this is where some of the fun of coordinating your own wedding comes in. This is why people choose coordinators and people to help because most venues will have restrictions on when you can bump in and when they need you to pack down and or bump out these hire or rental items. So it's one thing to get them in, another thing to get them out, but then you need to coordinate the times and the access. And these sort of arrangements are best to be decided months out from your wedding. This isn't something that should be teeing up the week of. That would be an absolute nightmare. This is why you have planners and coordinators. But if you don't, you'll need to discuss who will be responsible for packing up the items that you've hired and how they will be packed. And don't leave your venue responsible for repackaging up your hire goods safely for their return. And this is because as the hirer, you're the one who paid the fees and you signed the contract and those items and their timely return in the same condition that you hired them, it's your responsibility. Honoured Hire recommends having this conversation really early with your venue to make sure that everyone involved is clear on what's to happen well ahead of time. And this way, if you work out that you'll need help with packing everything up for return, you can plan ahead to avoid any issues or the stress that we're so desperately trying to avoid. And if you're arranging for delivery of your hire or rental items, you or your wedding planner, wedding coordinator, you'll need to work out these delivery times with the accepted bump in and bump out times of your venue. This is when things get really fun. I mean, it's like being an air traffic controller. It takes time. It takes a lot of patience. And I would highly recommend not having every conversation on the phone. If you have an email trail of what you've decided, who's agreed, who's responsible, then you've got that to be able to refer to as you go further down the track. Tip number three is your guest numbers. Now, with these hire and rental items that depend on guest numbers, you want to finalise how many you need of them within the window set by your rental or hire company. And this can vary wildly. So sometimes I've seen rental and hire contracts that just say, ah, oh, seven days, seven days before your wedding, give us the final numbers. I've seen those that say 14 days. I've seen 30 days and I've seen rental contracts that say 60 days prior to your wedding, we need to have final numbers. And there's a few different reasons why there's such a big gap between those dates and how early these companies need to know how much you want to use. And from their perspective, from the rental and hire company's perspective, you know, this is to make sure that the majority of their stock, you know, as I said, there's this big warehouse, it's filled with stuff. While it sits in their warehouse, it doesn't earn money. It's a museum of stuff. So when the stock, when the stuff inside this warehouse, the rental and hire stuff is out being used, being sent out into the world each week to earn its keep, that's where they want it to be. And so by not reducing your numbers in time, so for example, let's say that your numbers have gone from 100 down to 80. You don't want to pay for 100 of, let's just say napkins. You don't want to pay for 100 napkins. You want to pay for 80 napkins. You want 80 beautiful napkins, all looking gorgeous. But if you don't tell the rental hire company, then they don't know. And they're going to launder. They're going to iron. They're going to pack. They're going to present. They're going to have those 100 napkins ready for you unless you tell them within the window they've got on their contract. And this is another reason why you've got to read that contract. You need to know what's in there. You need to know, and I would put it in my calendar personally, if I was planning my wedding again and there were certain deadlines like when final numbers have to be in to your rental or hire place, that'd go on my calendar. I'd have notifications a week before, two weeks before, a month before. So then I know it's coming. I know that I have to have those numbers. And if I don't have them, I can then take an educated guess. You know, that's, that's the very best that you can do, right? And there'll always, always be these guests who don't RSVP on time or RSVP yes 
And then the week prior, they go, oh, so sorry, can't make it. Uh, my son's got his soccer tournament, totally forgot. And you just go, bloody hell, you know, you've cost me money. You've cost me a lot of money and you're not even going to be around to celebrate my wedding. So incredibly rude. So be aware of your cutoff dates, reduce your numbers in time with your hire company, and then they just won't launder them. You know, they won't uh, iron them, they won't pack them. And they can be those 20 that you don't need they can go out. As I said, like think of them like little people. They go out and they earn their keep with someone else at someone else's event or wedding. And similarly, if you want to increase your numbers and you just expect that the hire or rental company can fulfill your needs without the minimum notice, then you might be left very disappointed and caught out. The reason why these dates, these windows are in place are to make their processes of cleaning, of maintaining, of packing, preparing your items timely so they can keep running with other people's orders as well. Because yeah, it's sometimes it's hard to remember when you are planning your own wedding. I get it. I completely get it. But there are other weddings going on. There's other events going on. And you are not the sole person who needs to hire those coupe glasses, for example. So as much as your rental or hire company might want to help you out with an increase in numbers, they might not be able to if you don't get to them in time. Now, if you do get to them in time and they've run out, they might have the opportunity to borrow from someone else. They might have the opportunity to buy more stock in for you. And it just gives so many more options. And as we're trying to do today, reduce the stress. You still haven't written your vows yet, have you? Let me help. In around 20 minutes or so, you can easily write personalized wedding vows unlike anything you've heard before that will make your fiance feel like the most loved, understood and appreciated person on the planet. The how to write wedding vows that don't suck. (laughs) Instant download 17 page PDF ebook walks you through a step by step format for your vows, how to find the right words and phrases to describe your feelings and your fiance, how to write that crucial first draft, and create your final wedding vows masterpiece. So, if you don't know how or even where to start, if you've been Googling your little heart out, or if you've been calling them wedding vows, A-E-I-O-U, this ebook is for you. Included in there are also some bonus secrets for getting the most out of your wedding ceremony. So make sure you download your copy right now and get Write Your Wedding Vows crossed off your to-do list today. The link is in the show notes. In much the same way, when an item is damaged or broken, this can affect the rehire of that item. Yeah, and potentially the income that that item can generate. And this is why couples who rent and hire items for their wedding, they're required, it's in the contract, to keep the items in good repair, appearance and condition. And if not, you're going to have to reimburse the rental company when that item is returned. Now, you might not want to believe it, but frequently on a Monday morning, Big bundles of linen are being returned to rental companies and hire companies like all around the world. You know, you can imagine like if you've got 100 guests, you've got what, 10, 12 tablecloths, you've got 100 odd napkins that are being returned to the hire company that he used. And there's also candle wax, wine spills, blood, tissues and or other bodily fluids and burns that are often discovered inside. I've seen the pictures, it's pretty gross. So if you're wondering why it costs so much for a hire company to purchase, clean, store, repair and maintain linen in particular for you to hire, this is why. Now accidents, they do happen, they do happen and most rental companies recognise this but it's also only decent to alert your hire company if anything you've used for your wedding is missing 
or damaged so they can make arrangements to either repair or replace it for the next gorgeous engaged couple who have the same impeccable taste and colour palette as you. If you're not able to do this as the couple getting married, then you need to delegate it. This is why DIY weddings have so many moving parts. This is another thing that you will need to get your coordinator, planner, helper, whoever is taking care of this aspect. This is what they need to be doing for you. They need to be sussing out any damages. They need to be sussing out any hire or rental items that are missing. And so this is why tip number four is to use damage mitigation tactics and really decent risk assessment. It's funny, as a couple, as an engaged couple, the last thing you're going to be doing is like looking at your plans, looking at the room and going, hmm, yes, I can see the occupational health and safety angle is not really being covered here. But if you haven't hired professionals to look at that aspect for you, this is something you're going to have to think about to make sure that your guests are safe and that the things that you've brought in for your wedding, including suppliers, including the things that you're hiring, are also kept safe. So some potential damage mitigation tactics that you could keep in mind include knowing and communicating to your coordinator, venue and or helpers that any specialist cutlery, so generally it's cutlery that's not stainless steel, is washed according to the instructions that your hirer has specified. (laughs) Sounds very confusing. But if you imagine, um, you know, the beautiful gold-plated cutlery or cutlery that's made of, or even just with a little insert of other materials, you know, a little marble insert, a little, you know, fancy insert into the handle of your cutlery, it means that it can be more easily damaged in a commercial dishwasher or sometimes just with harsh detergents or abrasives. And then the drying of this specialist cutlery is really important too. So for example, the fancy gold-plated cutlery, you know, the ones that look amazing on a table setting, they can be really easily damaged because gold is a soft metal. So just one rough wash can cause pitting in the metal, which may mean that the pieces can never be hired out again, which is certainly bad news for your hiring company because they need to purchase new sets, but also for you after your wedding because guess who would need to pay for that? You'll want to be encouraging any smokers on your guest list to smoke outside and away from your linen because cigarette burns are all too common. And as beautiful and romantic as coloured rose petals are, you know, when the couple gets married and they walk down the aisle and the rose petals are going, these beautiful coloured petals can permanently stain a beautiful white carpet or aisle or even satin, a natural fabric runner, even if it doesn't rain, the natural water content of the petals can leach into carpet in the matter of just a few minutes. Likewise, so streamers, you know, those beautiful coloured streamers and you have the big wedding dance and all your guests wrap you up in streamers or coloured confetti that's not water safe only needs a little bit of condensation overnight or a splash of wine on them to bleed their colour permanently onto white marquee material and light coloured chairs or even tabletops. And arranging for your candles and or candle holders and stands to be kept away from linen, kept away from flowers, or at least have a barrier between candles and linen on a table setting, for example, is very smart. Think about the heat, burns, melted wax, and ask your stylist or whoever is setting up your decorations to provide or create a buffer or barrier between your candles and those tablecloths. Give your flowers a bit of distance between them and your candles. Let's have a think about it. Let's be safe here. And if you're thinking that this all seems like a lot of unnecessary hard work, just remember The people who hired these items before you took care of them, packed them up, arranged for them to be clean and transported properly, and it means that the condition that you've received them in is preserved and looks good for your wedding day. So make sure you pay it forward. Tip number five is taking photos and double-checking. 
So either when you receive your hire items at the venue or when you take them there yourself and you're unpacking them, make sure you check to see that what you ordered is what you got. Not only the style of the hire items, but perhaps, and sometimes more importantly, the numbers of things like cutlery, plates and glassware, so that if there are any shortages, your rental or hire companies can hopefully rectify the problem before your wedding begins. Also, before you start unpacking everything, throwing it everywhere, start setting it, also be sure to take that photo of how you received your items, which will record the condition of them and also the way they are packed to help you or your coordinator or helpers once the wedding is done to have your higher items returned in the same way that they're given to you, minimizing damages which you might have to pay for or forfeit your security deposit for, and saving time and angst in working out how everything goes back together. So, you know, especially into crates and boxes and stuff like that, how it's packaged with bubble wrap or tissue paper or whatever the case may be, you want it to be as efficient as possible. And one last tip, this is tip number six, (laughs) when either you or your coordinator or helpers are packing up your hire items, Make sure that you ask your venue if there are any unused items, so plates, cutlery, napkins, glassware, etc., that they've put to one side. So sometimes excess items might have been a counting error. It might be the result of your guests not turning up to your wedding, even though they RSVP'd. Or it can be a deliberate strategy from your rental company to make sure that you weren't caught out short. And they may have been set aside, you know, a few napkins, a few bits of cutlery, et cetera, during setup and not used for the event. And you want them to be packed up too to make sure everything's returned. The wonderful opportunities that having rental and hire items gives you is to be able to dress up your wedding in whatever vibe, whatever atmosphere, whatever look and feel you're trying to create at a fraction of the cost it would take to actually purchase everything. But it's really important to be aware of the process, of why it's so important to keep records of things, to keep your dates in line and to take care of the things that have been rented and hired to you to save yourself money and to also help the next couple who could be the very next weekend who have the same things as you. And so to summarize, the six key wedding hire tips to save you from stress are, for those who are picking up their hire items, number one, please make sure that your vehicle or the vehicles you're bringing along are the right size for all the things that you've ordered. And if you're unsure, please ask. Number two, Make sure you notify your venue of your hire and rental plans, including coordinating the date and time of your arrival or bump in with their bump in windows. It can be a bit of fun, a bit of back and forward there, but that's the whole coordinating aspect. Number three, make sure you finalize your guest numbers within the window set by your rental or hire company. You know, if their cutoff date is 30 days out, Make sure you get your final numbers to them by that cutoff date. So the rental or hire company has the capacity to either reduce your order to suit or increase your order to add more things on in a time frame that's not going to cause stress. Number four, use damage mitigation tactics and risk assessment when you're thinking about how you're going to be using these rental items, these items that you've hired. Protect yourself protect the things that you've hired as well, and your venue and your guests and your vendors. Number five, when unpacking your hire items for setup, take a photo of how they were packed, like a photo of the crate, a photo of the box. And if there's a problem with the condition they arrived in, make sure you've got a photo of that and take a count. Count the number of things that you receive to make sure you're not short on anything. And of course, if you are, get hold of your hire company straight away because a reputable company will make sure that things are fixed for you, as long as they have enough notice. And number six, when packing up your hire items, ask your venue if there were any unused items that were put aside so they can all be returned to your hire company at the same time. 
And big thanks to Honoured Hire here in Adelaide, South Australia for all their insight, their expertise and for helping bring this episode to you. If you own a hire company, I'd love to hear if you have any extra tips that you'd like to pass on for modern engaged couples to help them out and to make sure that they're fully aware of what they're entering into when they hire your staff. You can DM me at Unbridely on Instagram. And of course, if you're having a wedding and you're hiring staff or renting staff, I'd love to hear about your stories, your experiences as well. And I look forward to chatting with you next week. That about wraps it up for this episode of the Unbridly podcast. For the links and resources we mentioned, please head to the show notes. And if you love the show, please review and subscribe on the podcast platform you're on now so you don't miss out on a single episode. Thanks so much for listening. And remember, weddings are a team sport. Catch you soon.